Wealth Footprints, Volume 1. This is an incredible book written by 13 experts who share their knowledge, their experiences, and their expertise. They also share their stories in order to help you move from where you are to where you want to be. It is about looking at what we have and where we are. Hi, this is Clarity Coach Lucy, and this is Tuesday Talks at 3. Welcome to our episode. We celebrate the women authors who have decided to impact their environments, both internally and externally. Today, we spotlight my fellow co-author, Gladys Masioki, and she is here with her book, Essential Procurement. Gladys is here to share her life lessons and to leave us with three simple tips. Tips on how we can look at where we are, look at what we have, and make amazing growth choices. Gladys is passionate about the whole concept of value. So towards that, we ask the question today, what are you passionate about? And is it making you money? Please share your thoughts and contributions here on the live chat and we will sample them. So I'm just going to check on the live chat and see indeed whether we are live so that we can get this session going. And so as I look out for the session, remember the question, what are you passionate about and is it making you money? And let us see what it does for you, share with us. And when you share with us, we are able to take this conversation even further. If you are passionate about something and it is making you money, tell us. If you're passionate about something and it is not yet making you money, speak to us. And both Gladys and I are happy to share the secret of our success in writing this book together and sharing it and making money from it. So here we are. I am now on my page. And indeed we have been live for the last two minutes. So one last time, Today, we're here about the tender process, and we are here with the procurement expert, Gladys Mosioki. And the question today is, what are you passionate about? And is it making you money? We would love for you to share your thoughts and contribution right here on the live chat, and we will sample them. Cherono V, good to see you here. Karibu uh, sana. As we wait for everybody else to join us, we will continue with our session. Gladys Mosioki, thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday Talks at Three today. We would love to see your face. Thank you so much for accepting this invitation today. Good to see you right there. Can you hear us, Gladys? Yes, I can hear you very clearly, Lucy. Perfect. Well, Gladys, we know about your book, essential procurement, but would love to know a little bit about you. Please share with us a bit about you. Would you like to give thanks we've to God? Your, we've lost your sound, we cannot hear you. Can you try one more time? Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Lucy. I would like to take this opportunity to really thank God for the gift of life, for just being here. And I would also really like to thank you, Lucy, for giving me your platform to really share my story, which I am passionate about. My name is uh, Gladys Musioki, as you have rightly said. I, am, I do wear many hats. I am yeah. a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, an auntie, and by extension, I'm a grandmother. But uh, what I do as a professional, I'm a procurement expert, and an author. Let me just uh, talk about uh, my journey in procurement. 
when I was in college, I started, I studied uh, BSc, uh, my, degree, my first degree is in BSc Food and Nutrition. So mm. when I graduated, I didn't have that clarity of what exactly I want to do. So I took quite some time before getting a job. It took quite a, a couple of years before I finally got a job. And when I got a job, I got a job as a stroke controller. So okay. as being a stock controller and food nutrition, those are totally different things. So I was excited. It was in a big mobile uh, indus uh, service industry. Yes. And I started the yes. job. Uh, I was in the job for like uh, one, two years. Then I started questioning myself, uh, what is my career path? What does the job that I'm doing, where does it take me? Uh, you see, like when you're in an interview and I ask where in the next five years, where will you be? So I started asking myself, where am I going? So I yes. started looking around. Yes, I started looking around and I found that uh, stock management falls under logistic. And logistic is under the big uh, umbrella of supply chain management. Okay. So supply chain, man supply chain management has many sections. It has uh, procurement, it has uh, warehousing, it has inventory, it has logistics. But for me, it wasn't really clear, but what helped me is that uh, the farm, the telephone uh, um, industry that I was in had a procurement department. Okay. So I just chose maybe, let me do procurement, maybe this is where uh, uh, my career will. So I was very excited. I went back to school, that is for one year. Uh, came back uh, with a diploma in purchasing and supplies and very excited, I went to the head of procurement with my papers. Guess what, Lucy? I was, yes. told, the, I was told the certificate you have is not recognized. Oh dear not me. Anywhere in, yes, not anywhere in Kenya, not anywhere in the world. So again, I had to go back. So I was wondering if I have uh, to join procurement, what do I need? Back then, the only course that was recognized was CIPS. That is Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supplies. Okay. So again, I had to go back to school. But since I had to start from uh, uh, scratch, and this is a UK examining body, I took about three years. So finally, after three years, I was able to, uh, I, I got a certification in a graduate diploma in CIPS. Then I went back to the same uh, head of procurement and I showed my papers. So this yeah. time he was <laughs> receptive, he was excited. He said, this is the right papers that you've got. But yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> we don't have an opportunity at the moment. So, but in case if any opportunity comes, we will let you know. Of course, yeah. uh, again, that was a disappointment, but at least I'm happy I've got the right papers. So finally, within a year, I was able to join procurement. Why am I yeah. telling you this? This is just to encourage people that, you know, in life, sometimes your path is not very clear. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, so, and sometimes, but when you put your mind into something and when you are focused and you are persistent mm. and it really calls for a lot of patience. So you can see it took me roughly about actually six years for me now to get into procurement. Wow. So the saying, yes. Yeah, so the saying that says, "Don't see yourself as you are; see yourself as you can be." That really spoke to me. Yes, that really spoke to me, and that is how I ended into procurement. Lucy. Wow, that's such an amazing story, Gladys. Many a time, we just follow the path that is right in front of us. I mean, just um, last week, I was giving sessions, and the sessions were about the paths that we follow. And during our coaching sessions, we came up with a conclusion that we need to create our own path. And the things that you have mentioned here, the persistence, the focus, the patience, as you can see, I've been writing my notes here. These are important things when it comes to your passion because your passion then reveals itself. It's those things that you are able to do for free. And we looked at different uh, psychometric, psychometric tests, which help us to identify what our passion is. And in most cases, uh, the percentage of accuracy was quite high. But again, we always had to check in with ourselves. This is exactly what we feel with our passion.
are we um, being influenced by society when it comes to choosing our passion? But the one thing that remained true was the persistence, the, the resolution, the focus on this passion to make it real. And today you have just brought what we discussed last week in our coaching sessions to the fore with a real case study, which is you, a real true story. So you found your passion because your background was in nutrition. You found your passion and it took you six years Wow, ah, it sounds like as if you were going uh, for a medical degree or something. Uh, it looks like as if you were going for that. But then here we are. Here we are and you found this passion. This is what you have been doing for how many years now? Yes, so total experience combined with what I did as a stroke controller, it's actually about uh, 22 years. Yes, so I've been in this industry for quite some time. Indeed, it is your passion. If it wasn't, you would have figured out that by now and moved on. And this is such a powerful message for anyone listening to us today, that if it is your passion, go for it, work at it. There's only learning that we get along the way. We need patience. We need to trust in God. We need to stay focused. But I digress at the moment. We are here to talk about the tender process. And the tender process is part of your book that we co-authored together, uh, which is The Wealth Footprints, Volume 1. Why did you write your book? And your book is called Essential Procurement. Why did you write it? Thank you, Lucy. Uh, that's also a very interesting story because before uh, COVID 2020, if you had asked me about become, become an author, I think I would, that would not even be uh, something that I'm thinking of then, back then. But then now came COVID, we were, uh, lock, were under lockdown. And then I was privileged to meet uh, Christine, then Geoffrey, then uh, a group of you, uh, Lucy and I. But I think we have lost Gladys there for a moment. We were just waiting to hear how it is that she got to write this book and why she wrote the book. And as she comes back just to share with us her story, we just want to recognize that she had opportunities that presented themselves. They came as challenges, as problems, as issues. But what did she do? She used these opportunities and she used these troubles and uh, issues and problems and converted them into opportunity. How many times do we do that in our lives? Do we just fall back and become victims of situations or do we grab them, you know, like we say the proverbial uh, horn of the bull and just ride that bull because we know where we want to be. I believe, uh, Gladys is back. Gladys, you are answering yep. the question. Why yes, I'm back. I'm, yes, I'm back. I'm very... through, you were taking us yes. through the COVID time. If somebody yes. had asked you if you were going to be uh, an author, and I laughed because it's the same thing with me. We became authors at the same time. Who would have thought sure. that you would have become authors? So yes, please go ahead. You mentioned that uh, you met a few people in these sessions. Yes, I met a few people, uh, uh, Christine, Geoffrey, and of course, a couple of incredible ladies, that is Lucy, including you, Lucy, and we were in a class, a class called Wealth Messenger class. Yes. So in one of the sessions, I remember our teacher, then Geoffrey, mentioning that, uh, what legacy would you like to leave? Mm. How would you like to be remembered? And that Lucy really kept me thinking. I thought about my life, my professional life. I thought about procurement, what I have done. And I thought it is time for me to really share my knowledge, uh, my expertise with other people. But the main reason why I wrote the book, Lucy, is because I am interested in uh, mentoring the small and medium sized companies okay. in creating value in their procurement process. Yeah. I would also like my book to be a reference to the current, my colleagues in the profession. And thirdly, my, I'm passionate about the uh, young upcoming professional. Yes. I would like to mentor them. You see, Lucy, there's this notion or this belief that uh, procurement is a quick fix. Quick fix. 
mm -hmm. uh, get uh, get get quick uh, uh, rich quickly. Rich, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. But Lucy, that is not the case. Procurement is actually adding value in an organization, in a uh, in a company. It's not about an individual. So I just want to mystify that procurement is not about uh, coming into a workplace and making quick money. Procurement is about what value can you bring to an organization? And that is why I wrote the book. Oh, wow. This is just amazing. So it is for you reaching out to people who are in, as you can see, I've written quite a few notes. Eh? Okay. Reaching okay. Out to to SMEs, with are small, medium enterprises. So anybody yes. who is in these small, medium enterprises needs to be speaking to you because then procurement yes. will come their way. It's also for procurement professionals. Yeah, upcoming procurement professionals. Isn't that just amazing? I mean, somebody like me in my business and thinking about procurement, Half of the time, I would want somebody else to do it for me. But just to come onto this session today and understand tender process that is simplified is something powerful for me. So definitely you being able to share your knowledge with all of us is something that we are so grateful to have you on the session Today. Now, as you speak about the different groups that uh, you are here to touch, you also say you want to share your knowledge and mentor people. And we need more mentorship today. And uh, just mentioning the times of COVID, it has become very apparent that we need to share what we have. Now, you and I have put it down in a book. And for us, this is going to be our legacy, already our legacy. This book, this book, as we all see it here now, is going to outlive the two of us, Gladys. And when we have gained enough experience, we want to be able to put our story to touch others. Now, as, as we were doing this, I remember when we were doing this session, uh, Geoffrey at that point asked us about our core values. What are the things that we subscribe to? The things that are our being, the things that make us up, legacy or no legacy, work or no work, you know, uh, qualifications or no qualifications. So I ask you, Gladys, what are your core values? Well, Lucy, to begin with, first of all, it's integrity. For me, mm -hmm. integrity is very key. Mm -hmm. I don't see, okay, when I talk about integrity, it's just not about procurement. It's yeah. about everyday life. It's about all other professionals. Because yeah. just to give an example in procurement, a, a procurement process is uh, lengthy and uh, very involving. And yes. it involves a lot of steps. So it has, you have to be transparent, you have yeah. to be honest, and you have to be accountable. So I look at this as integrity is key in terms of uh, uh, doing my job not just at work, but everywhere else. Yeah. Secondly, I, my, uh, my other core value is consistency. Consistency, uh-huh. Yes, it's important for me to be really consistent in what I do. I would like people to see Gladys who is at work, Gladys who is at home, and Gladys who is in chat, or Gladys who is anywhere, being yeah. consistent in what she does, in what, in yeah. what I believe. So yeah. for me, consistency is very key. Another uh, core value for me is being open-minded. Okay. In our everyday life, we interact with different people, different cultures. In our workspace, we have we work with diversity, different people with different opinions. So if you are not open-minded, if you have a closed mind, then it becomes really very hard to even uh, work with people. For example, mm -hmm. if there is even maybe a case that you need to solve, if you really have to come to a conclusion, you need to have an open mind because everybody else would have a different idea. People want to come with different ideas or maybe I, okay, me as Gladys, as a team leader, I want to say, this is what I believe and it should go my way. So yeah. I believe open, being open-minded is very, very key in, a, in just our life generally. And indeed, that is so true. My question to you is how do you make this sustainable? Well, uh, it's it, okay. I can say it has become part of me. 
Mm. It's not something that I would struggle with. It's not something that I need to think about it because mm. as long as you're integrating, as long as you're honest, really your, your life just flows. If I'm in the office, if I'm doing my duty, then it just flows. So really it, uh, it's part of me. I've made it part of my life. And uh, yeah. of course, with the help of God, I really believe in God. I really trust in God. And whenever I have anything, I always seek uh, God's guidance. So living with integrity, consistency is just a uh, part of my life. It is. And it's interesting that you say that because when something becomes a lifestyle, it becomes a very natural thing that we do. It's a default at the end of the day. And we have to keep on feeding this core values. We have to feed them every day. And I, I will say that uh, also one of my core values is integrity. And at times I have found that I have fallen short of integrity. I like the way you have broken down the integrity into transparency, honesty, and accountability. And where I have found that I have fallen short of integrity is when it comes to matters self. When I ask myself, because I get accountable to myself, am I transparent with myself or am I feeding myself half truths? And I found that at times the answer to that question was, I am feeding myself things that are not correct. You mention that aspect of what it is that we are reading and the things that we want to allude to. And I found that in those areas, I was not being honest with myself because it is important that you start with yourself and this becomes a lifestyle. The other thing that was an aha moment for me as you spoke, that when you talked about consistency, it's you showing up, whether it is Gladys at work, whether it is Gladys in church, whether it is Gladys as an author, what you see is what you get. I love that consistency. And I have found that this has worked for me a lot. I am consistent. So where I fall, if I fall four times, I wake up five times. I keep on going on at it. I do not give up on myself. Open-mindedness, I couldn't agree with you better. In our world of diversity today, and especially post-COVID, we are now on a virtual call You've got people on different time zones. So it's different cultures coming together in that instant. Example, just this morning, I was on a virtual call that had six different cultures and five different time zones. For some people, it was late in the night, others it was early evening, others it was ready afternoon. For those of us in Kenya, it was 11 o'clock in the morning, and for the others, it was earlier than that. It was just amazing that we came together with such diversity and had rich conversations. If you're not open-minded, you cannot be in that space. So much as we're talking about tender processing today, we are talking about two aspects touching on your internal and touching on your external. I'd like to just recognize uh, a few comments here. I have got uh, Joseph Mosioki, who says, um, going on very well, kudos. We have got uh, Simiu Afula, who is watching. Uh, no comment from Simiu. Maybe Simiu, we need to remind you what our question is today so you could participate. The question is, what are you passionate about and it's making you money? So maybe Simuyu could drop for us a little message there and let us sample your answer. And then we put Kevin I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And uh, Kevin, you say book selling where? Oh, that is a lovely question. Are we just going to jump into that one right now, Gladys? Book selling. Where are you selling your book, Gladys? Uh, currently, uh, Lucy, I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm on Facebook, and that's where I'm advertising my books. And uh, I will leave my ad uh, addresses just immediately after uh, this uh, this uh, talk, and then maybe Kevin can be able to reach us. 
Fantastic. Good question. Kevin, you have your answer there. Remember, as we started out this session, we did say that this book is incredible. It's been written by 13 experts. And I want to recognize one of the experts is here with us today on the chat. And her name is Loy Kwagara. Loy is one of our co-authors. We are 13 of us. And we come up with our knowledge, our experiences, our expertise, and our stories so that we can help you move from where you are to where you want to be. Because we've done it. These are things that you can relate to. Like I said, it's about looking at what you have here and now. And I can see Loy has just responded and said, hi, Lucy and Gladys, watching and learning from Kampala. There you go again, diversity. One of our co-authors is from Kampala, Uganda. Okay, who else do we have watching? We've got Sally Havere, great to see you here, Sally, and Cherono V. The process. And this here today is special for us because in the tender process, it's a procurement process. And who better to talk to us than a procurement expert? So we've got Gladys Mosioki today, and she's talking to us about the tender process. We are going to get there right now. We're just unpacking what her core values are and how she is. Gladys, why don't you read a chapter from your book for us so that we can relate to the message that you are sending? Okay, Lucy, I'm going to read on the, uh, the tender process for uh, procurement simplified. So the tender process has multifaceted approaches and they differ depending on the method of procurement being used. For instance, whether the procuring entity is a public entity, private entity, an NGO, or is it an intergovernmental procurement? Here is the general overview of facilitating a tender. This is the process of notifying prospective suppliers of the organization need to procure certain goods, services, or works. Tender documents are the document used to request potential suppliers to offer a quotation bid or proposal to provide the required goods, services, or works, i.e. request for quotation, uh, RFQ, invitation to tender, or commonly known open tender, and request for proposal. Maybe just to say something a bit here before we go to, uh, to the next, yes. Uh, when we say request for quotation, generally what it means, whether it's a private or public entity, is that it ha we have a threshold in terms of uh, money spent. Just giving just an example is that maybe anything below maybe 2 million or 3 million, that would be a request for quotation. Then when it comes to invitation to tender, that is open tender, this would be a big tender that would be advertised. That would be maybe something from 5 million and above. Then when we say request for proposal, this is mainly for consultancy, it's consultancy services. And just to finish on this, I would say preparation of tender documents cover the process of assembling and formalizing the information and documentary documentation necessary for potential suppliers to prepare responsive and easily comparable offers consistent with the requirements and procurement strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm loving that uh, you've given us um, a few terminologies there. So we've got an RFQ, we've got ITT, and we've got RFP, and you've actually yes. qualified them for us there as to which one applies when. So in my understanding, uh, if I am a small, medium-sized enterprise, my, my request for quotation would be below the 2 million or 3 million, and therefore yes. most probably be the RFQ area. Uh, am I correct in making that assumption? Yes, 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 you're correct. Okay, and then the invitation to tender will be the one that is advertised, what we see in the newspapers. Newspapers, yes. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Well, that's something that, to today. Yes. Yeah. And then you point out that preparation of tender documents covers the process of assembling and formalizing the information and documentation necessary 
for potential suppliers to prepare responsive and easily comparable offers. So this makes it easy for me, the person who is reading it in the newspaper or in whatever publication it's in, to be able to respond. And, and when we come back a little bit later, I'd just like to take a bit more of that in the understanding of what we need to do in the next few questions. I will ask that question. However, my question to you right now is, who qualifies to send out tenders, Gladys? Yeah, uh, actually anybody can qualify to, uh, to send out a tender, but what is very key, there are three key things. That is the qualification, hmm. experience and certification. And what do I mean by these three things? When I talk of qualification, mm. when some when a tender is being sent out, I will talk, I'll give an example. It's a construction tender. Yeah. In a construction tender, we'll be looking for uh, engineers, architectures, maybe quantity surveyors, and those are the qualification that we are looking for. So, if it is a construction tender, then the first thing you need to look is that do I have that qualification? Yes. The second thing I talked about is about experience. Mm. If it's about building, then we have to look at somebody who has done this work before. If it's a building that is going to cost 50 million, yeah. we are going to ask you, give us the work that you've done that, uh, that is worth this money or show us the buildings that you, the brand buildings that you've done that is worth such money. That shows that you have the experience also and the capacity. Another thing on the experience is the same people that you have, are they qualified? Do they have the experience? How long have they been with you? And, and specifically, I can talk about consultancy. If you are looking for a consultant, we are very key on the how, how long they've done their job. So when we look for experience, we are looking at four years, five years, depending on what we are asking. And the last one is certification. This is very key because if it's something to do with construction, then we would ask for something called NCA. This is given by the National Construction Authority. NCA has different layers. That is an NCA from NCA 1 to NCA 8. So depending on what type of construction you are engaging, then you ask, maybe you want an NCA level one, maybe two, maybe three. So when you're looking at the tender, these are the things that you need to look. And the last one also, then, okay, the same one certification is if it's an ICT, uh, a technical tender, then there are some ICT certification that we would require. So I can say anybody can fill in a tender, but they need yeah. to look at these three things very keenly. You mentioned but NCA, yes, what is NCA? It's, it's, a, it's a certificate being issued by National Construction Authority uh -huh. to just show that okay. authorized, and certified to actually do that work. Yeah. Yes. So okay. the next thing I just want to add in terms of uh, who qualifies, mm. in the public sector in Kenya, there's been a directive that was given to uh, all the procuring entities that 30% yes. yes. of their procurement plan needs to be given to a special group. And who are this special group? These are women, these are yes. youth, and people living with disabilities. So these people, there are some privilege they enjoy when they are tendering. Yes. They don't have the same, uh, they don't have to provide the same documentation as any other person. Yeah. So if you are under this category, then when you are tendering, then when you are tendering, then uh, the qualification we require would be slightly, uh, not, slightly less than the ones okay. for uh, just a general tender, yes. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. At least we learned that there are certain groups uh, then that have the option to fill out these tenders. We also notice that depending on the industry that you're in, there are certain capacity qualifications, certifications that are needed, and therefore we need to do our due diligence. I'm just going back to the chat and uh, I can see that there is a question here. And this is, in fact, it is from Geoffrey Samaganda. Great to have you here, Geoffrey. It is, why do some people think government public procurement equals corruption or a get-rich-quick scheme, Gladys? Would you like to take that question? 
Yes, I can answer that, that um, the reason why uh, people think, okay, uh, actually, initially, before, right now, we have a, a public procurement act. The first one was enacted in 2005, and the second one was uh, in 2015. Before then, the procurement was done in a manner that was not really open to the public, and people felt that the funds were being misused. But currently, we have a very transparent process that we are accountable. Like right now, I can say that um, all our procurement process, yes, we have a public uh, call, uh, public uh, PIPP, public information for where we uh, upload all our tenders, all our processes. So currently, yes. the procurement process has become very transparent in yeah. terms of. Uh, what was there before has been uh, almost eradicated. Okay, so we filled up those gaps. So there was a time it was definitely a get rich quick scheme, but those gaps were seen. And now they've been closed in by processes and systems, uh, which allows us to be more transparent and accountable. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's see, we have our fellow co-author also, who is with us, Joyce Owaga. Great to see you here, Joyce. And Joyce, you say great talk, fellow authors. Uh, Kevin Chemonges has come back and said, thank you, I will reach out on social media. So definitely you have a bio for your book right there, Gladys. Uh, watch out for Kevin. Uh, Celine says, I am passionate about communication and people. And he says, good work, keep it up. Well, we are doing quite well today with all the questions and interaction. Please come through, uh, come through with all the engagement. But just to remind you that today's question is, what are you passionate about? And is it making money? So Simi says he's passionate about communication and people. Simi would love to know whether it is making money. Um, that is on to our next question. What should we pay attention to? Okay, I don't know if you can hear me, Lucy. Yes, just about yes, yes. a bit of noise okay. in your there's, background. There's a bit of noise on my background, yes, okay. If you do speak yes. up, we'll be able to hear you. Okay, okay, so uh, opening a tender is, is part of a crucial uh, process in our procurement uh, tender because uh, that is the time that we are receiving the bids. So the most important thing, especially in a public institution, is to have an opening committee. Yes. And usually it could constitute a minimum of three people. It could be more, but a minimum of three. And then uh, what is important is that when we send out uh, tender documents, we indicate clearly that during opening, the bidders or their representatives are welcome to witness the tender. Mm. So during opening, we have the two, the, the two groups. We have the opening committee and we have the witnesses. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is that uh, a tender box is brought to the opening room and the tenders are all, uh, all the tenders are open in front of the witnesses. Uh, the, uh, the parcels that have been brought are read out because in every tender there's a unique number, the reference number. Okay. So that reference number is first of all read for all tenders just to make sure that you're opening the correct tender. Once yes. you have the tender, uh, all the uh, tenders ready, then it is set for opening. And when you're opening a tender, what is very key, there is also, we also have two registers. We have the register that we use to indicate the number of tenders or the people who have responded. And we have another tender for the, those who are witnessing to at least sign. Another, another register, yes. you mean? Another register, those yes. Who are mm -hmm. Yes, just to confirm that they were there when this was being done. Mm. So once we start opening, each tender is open one by one. Yes. You make sure that uh, you read out the name of the firm that is bidding. Yes. And the tender sum. For some tenders, they would have something called security bid. Yes. Security bid is something that is just to show that whoever is bidding has the capacity. So if that is part of it, then uh, we record it. 
once the once we finish recording all the tenders, then it is signed uh, by the committee members and we have the register from the groups to show that uh, the witness. And why is this important, Lucy? It's important mm. because it shows that there's transparency and there's yes. accountability. Yes. yes. And especially yes. for the public, remember that we're using the taxpayers' money. Yes. So yes. it is important for them to, to see how their money is being used. And maybe that is one question to answer that, um, the question that Geoffrey was asking, that the structures and process are being put in place to ensure that any form of fraudulent or corruption is minimized. Yes, yeah. Yes. Wow, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, and we are hearing it from you as a procurement expert, which then carries weight. Therefore, we do know these are things that are happening because you're practicing it every day. And your core values are lending to this, that integrity and consistency and being open-minded. Uh, I just have one last question for you uh, when we're looking at um, opening tenders. Uh, I beg your pardon, not opening tenders, but when we are coming to tender, then what documents do we need or what tips would you give us? Because maybe I'm just jumping ahead and talking about documents. What tips would you give us as SMEs when it comes to tenders? Okay, when it comes to tenders, this would apply to SMEs and it will apply to actually anybody who is uh, bidding in a tender. Okay. You find that uh, most, especially open tenders, you find that there are huge, huge documents. But I would like just to uh, zero in in four particular areas. Okay. The first area is the, the entity's requirement. Okay. That, yes, that part talks about what is the organization looking for. All right. If, yes, if it's a cleaning tender, maybe they would, they would set their requirements and maybe the SLS. If it's a construction tender, they would say what they want. Yeah. It just set out what the, what we, what the uh, organization is looking for. And then now, once you are familiarized yourself in that part, the next part, you need to go to the mandatory requirements. Mm -hmm. Mandatory requirements talk about, uh, it asks just uh, statutory documents, things like tax compliance, a certificate of operation, and those certifications that I was talking about earlier, if it's a construction, it would ask about NCA. If it's an ICT uh, tender, it will have some specific certificates that are required. Yes. And then there are some forms that you need to fill under this, like business, uh, business questionnaire, confidentiality uh, form. So these are very key and very important. Actually, in a tender, the mandatory requirements if you don't meet even one criteria, then you are automatically disqualified. So those are very key areas yeah. that when somebody is um, looking at tendering, those are the tips that I would give that is very critical. The, the second, uh, the third part is technical requirements. Third, yeah. Yes, uh -huh. so the technical requirement, we are looking at your experience. Do you have the experience? Yeah. The people that uh, you are maybe offering to do the work, they have the experience. We're also looking at capacity. Do we have the human resource? Do we have the money to do the work? Yeah. So that, yes, that is the technical bit. And then the last one is uh, financial. Financial, what I would say, Lucy, is very key, is that it's important to do market survey. I'll just give a simple uh, example. If we are looking for pens, to buy and somebody quotes maybe just a, a normal a bio pen and somebody quotes maybe 100 shillings really you see and then somebody will complain no you know i tender they are never even got so it's important that when you're quoting you do your market survey and give a competitive price so yes. those are the areas which are critical yes yes yeah, yeah, the price is going to be uh, influenced by the supply and the demand. So it's important that it is competitive. We have a question here from Simeo Wafula, and he says, what qualifications do I need as a Kenyan youth to win a government tender? Okay, thank you for that question. What, how I would answer that is that 
uh, the youth, the women, and the PWDs, what I talked uh, before. This is a yes. special group which has been, uh, there's a certificate that they need to get from uh, National Treasury. It's called ACPOS certificate, meaning that you can register as a youth, you can register as a woman, and you can register with a person living with disabilities. Yes. Once you register with this, uh, once you have this certificate, there are privileges yes. that you get. When you are applying for a tender, uh, there's something I talked about, security bid. Security yes. bid is for us to see, do you have the capacity? So, but this group has been exempted from that. Mm, they don't need to, if, yes, they don't, they don't need to give a security bid. Another yes. thing is that um, we normally ask for maybe audited accounts. Again, yeah. this group has been exempted from that. So there are actually a lot of privileges that one, if you are a youth, then you can enjoy in terms of uh, getting a tender, a government tender. So Gladys, once I get a certificate, an AGPO certificate in answer to CIMIU, I'm good to go. I can respond to any tenders that have been publicized, advertised. Okay, one, okay. Yes, you can, but one thing that you also need, remember what I have said, there's qualification, there's experience, and there's certification. As much as we've exempted you from that, you still have to meet those minimum criteria. You still have to have that experience in that field, you still have to be qualified, and you still have those certification. But for example, when it comes to that group, the NCA I was talking about, you'll find that they would easily fall under NCA 8, 7, which is the lowest. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, Simeo, there you have your answer. And then we've got another question here, and again, it's from Geoffrey saying, Gladys, do you do one-to-one -one coaching for those who want to get involved in procurement? I'll just uh, repeat the question there, Gladys. Do you do one-to-one -one coaching for those who want to get involved in procurement? Uh, sorry, Lucy, I was thrown out off a bit. Please repeat the question. No problem. We have a question from Geoffrey Samaganda. Gladys, yes. do you do one-to-one -one coaching for those who want to get involved in procurement? Yes, Lucy, I do. Currently, I have a few people that I'm coaching. Uh, I talk about the, the small and medium sized organization, and I have a few that I am trying to create value in their procurement process. That's amazing. We would like to get your contacts when we come to the end of this. Maybe you could just go onto our live stream and put in a phone number or your social media handles so that we can get in touch with you. We can already see someone interested in buying your book. We already have questions on your one-to-one -one coaching. And right now we've got Collins Rono who has joined us. Well, Gladys, I'm just going to take a moment and read something from your book, which I found was amazing, especially when it comes to the improvement of the internal environment, what it is that we can do for ourselves. And I found it here on, uh, you have a chapter on principles that keep me grounded. Principles yes. that keep me grounded. Yes. So, and I shall read. I cannot do this role or any other responsibility without integrity. Personal and professional ethics are non-negotiable. Doing the right thing when no one else can see is very different from being honest with someone face to face. Being mindful of others is important. Irrespective of our perception of someone, Respect, consideration, and fairness can completely change how we interact with others. You might be tempted to look down on someone, but they may be the very one helping you out tomorrow. So I have become more aware of going back to the basics of connection. As a Christian, I believe we are all created in the image of God. That means we should treat all people equally. I embrace the power of gratitude. It is important to appreciate people and those who have helped you, or even the fact that you have a job. Gratitude changes your perspective. Instead of focusing on what is missing, it shifts the energy 
to all the good available in your life at any given point. Powerful words, the power of the mind is something else. What we focus on, that is where all our energy just keeps on flowing to. If we are focusing on gratitude, then we will do everything with such humility because we are grateful for that opportunity to have what is in our hands and make use of it, no matter how big or how small it is. And my aha moments there were just reaffirming on the integrity that you spoke about, on your definition of integrity, which is really powerful. Here you have broken it down even further. When we are being mindful of others, for me, emotional intelligence comes to mind. How do we deal with somebody else? But again, one of the five uh, pillars of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. Are you self-aware? Do you know who you are? How you show up? If you are in the tendering process, how are you showing up? Are you being open-minded? Are you being transparent? Are you applying integrity? So power of the mind, what you choose to focus on is powerful. Your mind creates what you experience. And in this case, the power of knowing where you are and, and what you have and making amazing growth choices is powerful. And this is what this book helps you, the audience, to get. And we do hope that you would be able to get a copy of this Wealth Footprints. Whether you are going to buy Gladys's book, whether you're going to buy Lois Wagara's book, whether you're going to buy Joyce Owaga's book, whether you're going to buy my book, the message is the same. It's about our wealth footprint. Footprints that can help you make amazing growth choices. So Gladys, I am looking forward to you being able to put your contacts here on the live chat. But I have two more questions before I let you go. And the first question is, what are the steps that organizations can take to optimize processes and translate resource strategy into accountable results? Okay, thank you, Lucy. The first thing that you need is, of course, to have uh, qualified personnel mm. and the right skills. Because if you don't have qualified personnel, then it doesn't matter what structure you have in place. Yeah. So once you have the qualified personnel, the next thing you need to have is to have policies and procedures in place. Yes. You have policies, policies in place like that anybody that ca can come to do that work it doesn't matter from where, they can actually follow and do the same thing. So it's important to have the right skill, the right, uh, have policies and uh, processes in place. Yes, those, those are the key things I would say, yes, on top of the mind. Exactly. That so no, no, matter, yeah. no, matter, no matter how big or how small you are, small. it's the right yes. people and the skills, yes. and it is yes. structured uh, processes and policies. Okay in place, yes. we need to have that yes. right. My final question, what three takeaways do you have for us today? Well, my first uh, takeaway, uh, Lucy, is patience. You can see from my first story on how I got into procurement, yes. it's, it was uh, being patient, it was being focused, it was being persistent. The yeah. second thing is uh, the power of the mind from even the experience oh, yes. of having, yes, even uh, the experience of writing this book, just having that mind that you are set and you are focused to do something. So the power of the mind is very powerful. And I want to quote what uh, Dr. Caroline Leaf, she's a PhD neurosurgeon. Mm. She says the mind can be redesigned. So it doesn't matter what you are thinking today, but if you focus your mind to something, you can achieve it. The third, <coughs> sorry. So, so my, uh, my third takeaway uh, is, I've talked about patience, I've talked about uh, being uh, the power of the mind, and then my last one is trusting in God. You cannot do all this without the, without, yes, without the power of God. So for me, uh, I think God has been the center of my life. Oh, very powerful, very profound. You've brought it all together for us. 
the things that you have made to impact your environment, which is both internal and external, because they work together. For you to be good at what you do, you need to understand yourself and just apply that self so that you can pour out to whoever is listening. So for you out there who are thinking about a career in procurement, we have got our procurement expert here and she will be sharing her contacts on this Facebook page, which is hashtag Tuesday Talks at three. Please feel free to visit us there and get contacts of how you can get your book, how you can have one-to-one -one coaching and whatever mentoring that you may need. And for those of you who are already in procurement, a reminder from Gladys here that integrity is something powerful, consistently powerful, and so is being open-minded and being patient. Gladys, Today, you have told us that the primary aim of procurement profession must be to achieve that value of money, because that is what we do. We need to ask ourselves if our core values are aligned to deliver this. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to have reflection and deep thinking on tender processing. Who would have thought that this could be a topic that could be about self and the growth of your internal self? Thank you, Gladys. Thank you so much for sharing with us this process in a simplified way. Thank you. So next episode, we celebrate Joan Ambessia as she takes African women into the future through robotics and artificial intelligence. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for the recording of this session today so that you will be able to follow us with all the wealth footprints co-authors that we are spotlighting. My YouTube channel is LMC Consultants. Remember when you are there to hit the notification button just as you hit the subscription button so that you can get prompts whenever we have a new video. Visit our website, which is www.lmcconsultancy.com for more on our services. And as you can hear, there's 30 authors and we would very much like for you to learn from our experiences. We want you to join us on this journey because it helps build each other. And until then, be kind to yourselves. Bye-bye now. Thank you, Lucy.